And so what I want to share with you this morning is a little bit about courage, but it's a little bit more about how do we stand like Moses. Now, when you go through the life of Moses, we don't have time to go through his whole life. We'd be here till tomorrow afternoon. But we see that they are in, when they are in Egypt, that many of the Israelites, and when we read that passage in chapter 14, they're saying, why did you bring us here? We would have rather stayed there in a pagan land, forcing to worship a pagan god, not being able to stand on their faith, not being able to say, I belong to Israel for fear of death. They were in prison. They were, they were uh, uh, slaves to the Pharaoh. They would have rather had that than be free in God. Why? How could that happen? How could somebody do that? Well, let me tell you something. We see it more and more today. And I want to stir something up this morning because even as I talked about the presence of God in our community and how God has extended his hand in our community for us, for Christ Community Church, to bring the word of God out there, to be a light in a community that is is desperately dark. We see the erosion of our faith and we see it in so many ways. We see it by people uh, just blending things together. Just blending beliefs and, 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 and uh, uh, voices of faith representing crazy things and, and nobody says anything. Nobody seems like they're ready to stand for what the Bible really says. You know John MacArthur, he's a great theologian. He's written many, many books. One on leadership, which is excellent. Um, I I really like John MacArthur. I do have to tell you that he is not one that believes in the separate baptism of the Holy Spirit like we believe. He believes that it all happens when you get saved. So I want to tell you that. So when you read something, if he says something anti-charismatic or anti-against Pentecostals, don't get nervous. He really doesn't. He doesn't like us very much. But only for that reason. But most of his stuff is square on. And he tells a story. John MacArthur tells a story that he was uh, had to drive his son son's old car back, I think, to Pennsylvania. I can't remember exactly where. Anyway, he and his wife are bringing the, the car down to his son. And uh, they stopped at a farmhouse because they had a little sign that said quilts. It was their anniversary. And he thought, what a great idea. I'll get my wife a quilt from the Amish country. And so they pull into this uh, this little farmhouse house and uh, and he tells the farm the wife what he's he said I was looking for the quilts I saw the sign for quilts and she goes oh let me get some and I'll show them to you so she uh, goes upstairs and gets all these quilts and as she's bringing them down John MacArthur looks over and her husband is reading uh, a magazine uh, that uh, was uh, Jehovah's Witness is the watchtower and so he doesn't say anything he's looking but then he looks and and he sees that he's got a whole stack of different books, some of them absolutely Christian books, credible, reliable Christian books. And then he saw a couple of books that were pro-cults of one sort or, or another. And the guy was reading The Watchtower. And so, and, and actually, I think one of the books that he saw was one of his books in that pile of eclectic reading material, right? So he says to the guy, Oh, I, I, I see, uh, I see you, you're a reader. He said, uh, are you a believer? And the guy says to him, the farmer says to him, a believer in what? And he says to him, are you a Christian? Are you a Christian believer? He said, well, you know, he said, cause I, cause John McCarthy said, cause I see all of those, all of those different beliefs there, but are you a believer in Christ? And the guy says, well, you know, all of those religions, he said, all have something good in them. I just take the good and leave the bad. That sounds like our world, isn't it? Who wants to hear about a God who who uh, sends the floodwaters and crushes the the the, uh, the armies of the of the Egyptians? What about those poor soldiers? What about the horses? I, I always think, oh, poor horses. But you see, so many of us live that way. We take anything in. Not to make a stir. 
And we don't know our doctrine well enough that we can stand on it. Now, I'm not saying that, that we, unless the Lord tells you to, to be standing out on a street corner uh, shouting doctrine and condemnation on everybody else. But I will say, we need to know what we stand for. We need to know it. We need to find it in scriptures. We need to be able to share it with love every chance we get. That's what the people in East Haddam need to hear. That's what the folks in Southington need to hear. They are looking for someone who stands on what they know is being true. There is nothing true in our culture today. I want, I mean, does that, does that ring true to anybody? There's really nothing true in our culture. So we had a, 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 a tremendous example, a sad but example, but a, a, a huge example this week with all of the testimony down in Washington. He said, she said, he said, she said. And, the, and in the end, nobody could prove the truth. I want to tell you something. We live a life in that, in that area. So nobody says, hey, listen, you know, it's there. I have the truth. I have the truth. Do you want to know the truth? I've got the truth. It's in this book. Let me share a couple of passages with you. Nobody has that. We do because God has brought us together of like faith. We have our. We put our statement of belief right out there. If you need it, because you need a little primer for it, you take one and you go through those things. Highlight them in your scripture because the world needs somebody to tell them the truth. The, the John MacArthur story goes on further because the woman brings down uh, a number of the quilts and the first quilt she shows them, she said, this is my favorite. And he, they open it up and John MacArthur said he looked at it and, he, and, uh, and his, he and his wife were looking at it and it was the oddest quilt he had ever saw. There was no symmetry. There was no, she put a, a piece of cloth here that didn't go with this cloth there were different symbols that he didn't even know about they were all kind of mismatched things that didn't give him very much peace about anything and uh and he finally said well we were looking for something more you know with fly, i don't know some he explained a little bit more and she goes oh i have just what you're looking for and sure enough she goes back upstairs she brings down a quilt that's quite beautiful and he purchases it for his wife but he he goes back and he thinks about the correlation between that quilt that was so mismatched and the one that she took great pride in. It must have taken her a long time to hand do that. And the stack of books in her husband's study. You know, when you think about it, all the mismatched kind of stuff that we put in our lives every day, giving credibility to things that really are not credible at all according to the sight of God. He said it's so similar to our world today. And I agree, it's so similar. You know, when the Israel, uh, when the Israelites were, were said, come on, we're gonna go, they were, they were like, well, we're going into the unknown. But yeah, Moses could be crazy. You know, we're following Moses? This is the guy that got us in trouble by killing the, killing the Egyptian soldier. We're gonna follow him? And yet they did. But they always held that little card, just in case it doesn't work out. I know because when I became a Christian, I said, Lord, I'm going to try this thing. I'm going to try you. But if you're not there for me, I'm out of here. Always that little trump card, oh, sorry, in the back of your pocket, you know. If it doesn't work, I can always do that. If our, so we always keep it not completely our lives given to God. We can always back up. But I want to tell you something. That, um, that there is so much joy in selling out for God. Being completely devoted unto him. Uh, Karen, I, I posted uh, an announcement uh, yesterday on Facebook for service today. And I used a picture. I didn't have a picture. And I was on my phone. And I didn't couldn't get into the internet to get something kind of cutesy for church. You know, like the ch- a church building with a sunset in the back or anything that looked good. So so the, the picture I posted was me... Uh, when we went, when we went to, uh, zip lining. <laughs> right, Julie? We looked so good. <laughs> What's that? Well, I answered that though, didn't I? Did you read all the comments? I think I saw it before you. Oh. Well, yeah, I, I had one with me in, in the gear like this. With the helmet and everything on. Yeah, there you go. It's Julie and I. And, and when I started getting responses, like people who 
didn't get the joke because I'm thinking of us because all of you know I didn't zip. <laughs> and But uh, people are saying, I'm so impressed. You're amazing. How wonderful. At your age. How I went, oh boy, I better get this straight or it's going to backfire me in the spirit. I said, no. I said, D- don't be fooled by the picture. I said, somebody had to stay back and hold the keys. So <laughs> 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 don't be fooled. Don't be fooled. But, you know, it's one of those things here, you know, I, you know you've know, you all seen it, me standing like this, and it's like, you, you zip on over, that was the title, zip on over to Christ Community Church. <laughs> Listen, we have something to share with people that will change their life, but it's not going to change anybody's life. It's our faith is not going to change our lives unless we give control over to Jesus Christ. Unless we look at ourselves, I want to just share with you a few things. Um, uh, We can't share even our salvation without really coming face to face with the Lord. Some people will say, well, you know... um, I just sort of fell into salvation. And they'll tell you that they're a follower of Christ. And you'll say, so what does that mean? And they'll say, one day I just wanted to follow Jesus. And you and you go, oh. So you turn from your wickedness. You turn from your sinful nature. You turn from the wretch that you are. You turn from that? Well, no. I'm not a bad person. I'm just following Jesus. Do you see how our world can just change things? I want to tell you that I was a sinner and now I'm found. I once was lost and now I'm found through the grace of Christ. I, uh, my soul is as black as black can be until Jesus came, forgave me of my sin, and put me on solid ground. There are some times I still fall short but I'm grounded in Christ. And I can say that not with some big kind of ego or anything because it has nothing to do with me. I saw where I was before. That was when I left, when my life was up to me. And now I see where I am because now my life is in Jesus. So we have to be honest where all of that is. And that comes from solid doctrine. You know, so when people say, oh, well, no, I don't like, rep- I don't like talking about repentance. I, I, uh, you know, I don't like talking about sin. Well, let me tell you something. What were we saved from if it wasn't from a sinful nature? What are we saved to if it wasn't that we were adrift in our life and we had made a complete mess of our life without Jesus? Know our doctrine. Stand on what we know, what God has done. Um, we There's a few things I just want to mention. And the first one is I want us to embrace our identity. You know, who are we? Who are we? Because we have followed Christ and Christ has redeemed us, we have become the children of God. And if children, heirs, that's in Romans. Romans 8, I believe. So what, what have we, what do we, who are we? We are the children of God. We no longer make decisions for ourselves. Our identity is in Christ. We go where he wants us to go. And by the way, we don't go where he doesn't want us to go. Now we can be, <laughs> we can be at the Red Dog, Ben. And God sent us there. I'm, I don't know why I'm talking to you, Ben. Maybe, I don't know. Maybe God's got a call for you at the Red Dog. Yeah. I don't know. But we could be at the Red Dog and share Christ because God brought us there and people's hearts will be touched and, and they will be open for the next person to come along and bring them to Jesus. Or we can go to the Red Dog and make a mess of ourselves and end up getting sloshed at the bar. Don't say God brought you there if he didn't bring you there. Because as a child of God, we go where our Father tells us to go. We walk with his ring. You know, like the prodigal son, when the father says, put a ring on his finger, the authority of that household was back on that prodigal son's finger. We go, we have that ring on our finger. We belong, we have the inheritance. We are a product of God Almighty. We are a child of God, blood-bought and Holy Ghost baptized. We walk as children of God and obedient in that walk. 
Now I want to say to you, as we live our lives every day, whether we're working at 7-Eleven or we're, we're at a, on a football field or a basketball court or wherever we're, we're, we're putting in stones or whatever we're doing, teaching kids, whatever we're doing, we still walk as children of God. That's not something that we leave for church on Sunday. We walk in that heritage. We look like our father. If you look at my brothers in the natural, we all look the same. People stop me on the street and say, you look like Jerry's sister. Hmm, Well, yes, I am. Sorry, (laughs) but I am. We walk in his image. That the love that comes from us is without restraint and it is for everyone who comes into our lives. The love that we give is not our love to give because we have an awful lot of things that stops us from loving. They don't look like me. They don't smell like me. They don't live where I live. And all of that stuff enters into, or they're, they're, they're uh, this or they're that, or they have too much ego, or they don't believe in that, whatever. All of that is disqualifiers. We love with the love of Christ. We look like God to them. We look like him in the spiritual sense. That there is a welcoming in our heart. Mm. Is there a welcoming in our heart today? Jesus didn't throw us out because, you know, we were too tall or too fat or too skinny or not smart enough. We we are so insecure in ourselves that we have we have qualifiers for everything. And none of them make a difference to God. You know yourself that there are people when you go, oh, come on, we've all done it. Oh, Harvard, hmm. Makes no difference to God. Third grade, you left school at third grade. Really? Come over here, honey, stand by me. Our kids, keep them away from them. With Christ, his arms are open and so should our heart be. Walk in our identity. Embrace it. I love this line, and it's not mine. I wish I, I wish I had thought of it, but God wanted this other person, and I can't remember her name. I think so. Please forgive me if you ever hear this, this uh, tape. But children of God, believe in the invisible, believe in the impossible, and believe in the incredible. Let me read. Isn't that great? Let me say it again. And whoever you are, thank you. We believe in the invisible by faith. The invisible. We can't see it. We can't touch it. And yet it's as real as this podium. We believe in the invisible. We believe in the impossible. How can you believe that? That's impossible. I believe, I believe, I believe. And let me tell you something. When you're going through a health crisis, like I had this summer, you've got everybody in the world going, oh, oh. Oh, I believe in the impossible. It was a fight I've never had to experience before, but I gotta tell you, we believe in the impossible. No matter what the doctor says, no matter what we're going through, no matter if we don't have two nickels to rub together, I believe that we'll be prosperous in the sight of God and that God will provide for all my needs, that God is with me and not against me. He brings that cloud of of the presence of Almighty God behind me to protect me and in front of me to lead me. I believe in what I can't see and can't hear and can't speak. I believe. That's a child of God. So we believe in the invisible. We believe in the impossible. But God. Let me tell you, none of us would be sitting in these chairs. But God. Amen? It is God who brought us together. He brought us together not just to have a, an entertaining kind of thing at, uh, on Sunday morning. He brought us together that we would worship Him and that we would be changed and not that, that we would just sit here until next Sunday. That we would go out and bring that same light into a world that is so confused they don't know what's real or not real, what truth is and not truth. They don't, they're dying and without hope and we have it. And we have it, and are we sharing that hope? 
Oh, let me tell you something. I've never felt this more than I have in in this past week. How important the, the treasure that God has put in us. It's a treasure. And we have it. And we don't give it enough away. You know, it's like manna in the desert. We're talking about Moses. The manna would come every morning and you couldn't keep it till the next day. It would be broken. It would not be broken. It would be, um, it would be spoiled the next day. But the scriptures say every day there's a new manna, new food for the soul, new food, new hope for the unbeliever, new desires, new deliverance for those that are held in, in bondage with drugs and alcohol. He, there's new hope for those that have idolatry in their hearts, that they love their house more than anything else or love this more than it. Listen, there's no room in our hearts for idolatry. That's how wonderful the love of Christ is. There is there is deliverance from all of that. Ah, I'm telling you. I'm ah. Oh. And we believe in the incredible. That this gray matter doesn't know it all. This gray matter is just as limited as limited as as can be. And every and every day we learn more that we don't know. We learn, we learn, we think we know, and then we learn from God. We don't know. <laughs> we tell people this because we think we know, and then we go, I'm sorry, we, we don't know. <laughs> we work for the right master. Our life is given to the one we call Lord. And because of that, we check our lives. We, we want to please the one who we call Lord. So our heart is open. We are teachable. We are soft and ready for the Lord to bring us and to move us. But once we are moved, we stand. And we tell the truth. We don't, we don't make it a mish, mishmash of all kinds of beliefs and all kinds of baloney and all kinds of religiosity too. I, I try very hard not to talk about Christian faiths and stuff. They, there's enough going back and forth. But I want to tell you, in this church, I don't care if you're wearing jeans or shorts. I don't care. And I've really grown in that because I came from a tradition that was very rigid as far as what we looked like and especially up on the on the platform. Uh, I was told from day one, you're a woman. Never preach in slacks. God sees it as an abomination, by the way. He does. <laughs> and I And you know what? The first time I had to do that because I was out and taking care of business and I came back and I had to give the word someplace, I was like... I I was apologizing. I couldn't even get the word out because I was apologizing so much. And the Lord hit me on the side of the head and said, what are you doing? I want to tell you that we put restrictions on us in churches all the time that God never expected us. Never. God says, give me your heart. Give me your life. And love with my love. He didn't say, you, ladies, you have to wear, all your skirts have to be down to your ankles and you can't, you can't wear high heels because you know. Huh. What we've done in God's name and yet he loves us. We need to throw all that stuff out. I, I just, you know, I still believe in coming to the Lord, you know, on Sunday morning we come to see the Lord and I want to, I want my, my whole self to say, Lord, I love you. Put you first. You know, if I was having dinner with the president, I'd be dressed and I think you're better than the president, Lord. So I'm going to get dressed the way I think I should. But in the same way, I won't let it stop me. I mean, goodness. If you saw what I looked like yesterday, you would have said, oh my. <laughs> She's come a long way. I-, I want you to know something else. And that's that through our lives, we are prepared for service. Through our lives, God has equipped us to do exactly what I'm talking to you about this morning. To let go of those things that keep us and run to Christ and be Christ in every place that we find ourselves. You're equipped. You can do this thing. 
And you, and you know what? Sometimes we find ourselves going into a situation, whether it's at work or with neighbors or family, and we go in, we're going to be Jesus in the family. And then we get in there and Uncle Jim, sorry Jim, Uncle Fred, is there a Fred here? No. Um, Uncle Fred is there and you know he just gets to me. He's got those weird liberal views and pretty soon I'm not, I'm forgetting my identity. And I'm going at it with Uncle Fred. Let me tell you something. We've got to understand that we're equipped for Uncle Fred. We're equipped for every single thing that we're coming in contact with us today. Keep that in our hearts and in our minds. That that cloud is before us. The presence of God. That's what the cloud was. The presence of Almighty God is before us. It's behind us. We're surrounded. We're protected. We don't have to react to the devil in somebody else. We can stand strong and firm and focused on the Lord Jesus. It is a wonderfully joyful life that we share. It is a time, you know, that's why I was getting so excited as we were, as we were singing this morning. You know, Ben, I, I just, uh, I loved singing all, all of those songs. They were wonderful. But, you know, as we, as we started to sing, as I said, I could feel the presence of the Lord filling this place. And you did too, because all of a sudden I began to hear your voices in the back. I be- began to hear people clapping. I wasn't the only one a little off tempo, but everybody was off tempo this morning. It was great. It was great. As we sing and pray and glorify God, you know, we bring the glory of God with us. When they were in the wilderness and they went from place to place, they brought, they brought the, the tabernacle of the Lord. And the presence of God was in the Ark of the Covenant. Wherever they went, he was with them. How much more when the tabernacle of the Lord is in our heart and that we have Jesus with us always. The Lord says in Matthew 14, don't let your heart be troubled. Believe in God also, believe in me. He's prepared a mansion before us where we will sit at the table of God. One day. But until that day, we are here in this vineyard to bring the love, the joy, the peace, the truth of Almighty God everywhere we go. Amen? Amen. Amen. Come on, stand up and let's pray.